now at 11, Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best announcing her retirement in an email to the entire Seattle Police Department tonight. It comes just hours after the city council voted to slash SPD's budget, a move the chief has fiercely opposed, saying she was not invited to the table to discuss efforts to change policing in Seattle. A longtime veteran of the Seattle Police Department who works closely with Chief Best tells me tonight this was a bombshell. Tonight, the council voted 7-1 to one to cut SPD's budget by 14% for the rest of 2020. It is not the 50% cut some activists were demanding and some council members initially supported. Council member Kashama Sawant was the lone no vote. Council member Deborah Juarez was absent. We have team coverage on the fallout, starting with Como's Tammy Mutasa and the message the chief sent to her entire department tonight. Tammy? Preston, you know, this is a very shocking and disheartening announcement for the law enforcement community and the black community. Chief Best was the first black woman police chief in this entire department, and we expect to hear from her tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. at a press conference with the mayor. Now, let's take a look at this email that Como News obtained. Now, this was sent out by Chief Best to the police department saying she is retiring on September 2nd, not resigning like some media media outlets reported. In the email, Chief Best says, quote, this was a difficult decision for me, but when it's time, it's time. Adding, I am confident the department will make it through these difficult times. Chief Best's decision to retire comes just hours after the Seattle City Council voted for cuts to the department. The suggested cuts include up to 100 officers, including 32 patrol officers, 38 officers in specialized units like SWAT, Harbor Patrol, and mounted officers. 30 through attrition or retirement. And in a reversal, the council had voted not to cut the chief salary by 40%, but instead by 6%. Now tonight, we talked to Jim Fuda from Crime Stoppers about the chief's stunning announcement. It's ludicrous. It makes me sad. Carmen went through the federal consent decree. She brought the agency up to the federal standards. Um, we are progressive agency here, and the fact that this council would negate all that she's done and try to do more cuts instead of uh, be concerned about the public safety and pander to a very small percentage of our population here in this city, it's, um, it's not right. Chief Best says in the email, Deputy Chief Adrian Diaz will serve as the interim police chief. And the chief ends that email by saying after 28 years in the department, she is thankful to be with SPD and that she considers them family. Now tonight, I also got a text from black community leaders who fought for Chief Best telling me that they'll be at that press conference tomorrow rallying behind her. Back to you. Tammy, thank you. In the last hour, Como News obtained this statement from Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin's office sent to members of SPD. She says, while I understand the chief's reasons, I accepted her decision with a very heavy heart. She goes on to say, Carmen Best is still devoted to this department and our city. I regret deeply that she concluded that the best way to serve the city and help the department was a change in leadership in the hope that would change the dynamics to move forward with the city council. Today, council member Teresa Teresa Mosqueda called the 14% cut a down payment for bigger cuts next year. They want the money reinvested in community-based programs. There are significant steps that we are taking in this budget that if continued this fall will be annualized and result in um, both reductions and also opportunities for us to invest in community. The public safety landscape could look a lot different once these budget cuts take effect. Some call it a step forward while others see it as reckless. Cumbo's Joel Moreno live tonight with a range of reactions to defunding vote. Joel? Uh, Preston, too timid for some, terrifying for others. Either way, the groundwork is now laid to make even more sweeping changes in next year's budget. Among those at the pro-police rally at City Hall this weekend was Rachel Christensen, who worries that officer layoffs are being undertaken in the name of politics, not public safety. Plan, I'd like to see them work with Chief Best. That's really a big concern of mine. It's that they seem to have just sort of sidelined her. But the positions and programs being eliminated, including the navigation team that handles homeless camps, encourage members of Chief Seattle Club who think nonprofits practicing harm reduction are the best investments. If the social workers on the ground that are mission driven have the tools that were given to the NAV team, there, we'd see a 
far bigger dent put in this problem. The speed of the reforms have caught some off guard. Business groups say crime was bad before and they don't think fewer police will make people safer. We've been asking the city for a couple more, hundred more police officers and we thought they would were agreeing with us and all of a sudden this change and dropping these numbers down. City council members say they are committed to deeper cuts, though it's unclear if they'll slash the police budget in half. Some community groups have called for. I'm not sure anyone is going to be safe in the city of Seattle if that happens. Like getting rid of half the police force, half of them are still going to be, if the system doesn't change, it's just limiting half the brutalization. Uh, budget talks continue Wednesday when COVID-19 relief gets taken up and then again this fall when next year's spending, spending plan gets taken up. Back to you. Thank you, Joel. Although it wasn't 50 percent, one of the groups leading the defund movement is encouraged. King County Equity Now says today City Council inched us towards a safer future where instead of using our limited taxpayer resources on half a million dollar salaries for police officers, we allocate those funds towards data driven community based solutions, which they say includes affordable housing, shelters and mental health services. Well, here's a look at the events leading up to this vote on May 25th, George Floyd's death in Minneapolis police custody sparked nationwide calls for racial justice and police reforms. Four days later, the first protest in Seattle ended with vandalism and nightly protests continued. On June 8th, protesters established the CHAZ outside the East Precinct, which later became the CHOP. And one of the top demands in that movement was defunding SPD by 50 percent. On August 5th, the city council approved a series of amendments to cut SPD's budget for the rest of 2020. And today, the council passed the final package of cuts. Some businesses are of course concerned about the fallout of today's vote as they clean up from yet another night of vandalism. Two people in jail now after vandals damaged eight businesses in Seattle's first hill last night. Windows were smashed, storefronts were tagged with graffiti, police arrested six people. Business owners say the city council decided to defund SPD without a real plan in place. I think this is a reckless set of decisions that are, is not going to result in more just policing for black lives in our community, which is desperately needed. I, I think it's going to actually take us in the wrong direction. Four of those arrested were released but could still face charges. New at 11, lawyers are dropping a request for the city of Seattle to be held in contempt after the city agreed to more crowd control restrictions during protests. Under the deal, police cannot use a riot declaration to justify the indiscriminate use of crowd control weapons. The city also agreed not to use crowd control weapons on journalists, legal observers, and medical workers. Black Lives Matter is suing Seattle, claiming police violated a court order that bars the indiscriminate use of chemical weapons against protesters.